funny, suspenseful, and took some time to answer some of my big questions. Let's go, baby. <laughs> the theme song intro is very outlawish. I like that. <laughs> I like the, the TV music already, so uh -huh. I'm liking what's going on. Uh -huh. And I like the acting already. This is pulling me in. I, we've missed a lot of seasons, but we're interested. Mm -hmm. You know what time it is? About 24 minutes into the season three premiere of Outlaws, British series. I have not seen it before. I love it. We're opening with a lot going on for Ronnie. I'm the study hard, yeah. She's getting a knife and then she's coming in. And she has a dead body in the trunk and she needs everyone's help. And this is six months after we last saw everybody, if you watch season two. So we'll get back to her because this is the big hook to get us into what's going on here this, this season. And then the folks who are running the community payback are clueless. Diane and her new uh, <laughs> second in command, Stan, I guess. Uh, they have the people who are working there just, I mean, doing the community service, they are just have a dead body being walked behind them and they're talking about how you got to be on alert all the time. The, just the writing is so much fun, that little yeah, bit of irony yeah. there. And it's just layered like that over and over again. But we're getting all these different moments for you to see people in the ensemble. Reading you, baby, with the lights down low. I've got an advanced lesson ready to go. We've got people like Myrna doing her protest and then she sees a, a friend Someone that she was interested university. in from university, and he's coming through, he's going to give a lecture, and she wants to connect with him, but she doesn't want to. And so she's not scared to stick it to the man, but she's scared to open up her heart. Right. Things people can relate to. So I'm liking that we're getting to introduce these characters midway through a lot of arcs. They have a lot of history with each other, push and pull. They have the influencer character who's uh, letting people know about um, some of her recent issues with uh, look confused i know just what to do polyps very relatable and she's doing a sex marathon because she's now healed from all that which is very frustrating to her flatmate who's an actor who i've seen in a bunch of things i gotta yes. educate Stephen you. merchant is the name of the actor who's playing the gregory character mm -hmm. uh so there's just a lot here and they're doing a good job of pulling us through and giving us jokes relatable things for people to be dealing with at a lot of different stages of life and in a lot of different moments where they're negotiating things, the unique way that these folks would, would you play for laughs? I like it. It's not getting cheap laughs though. I really believe all these folks and I'm having a good time with the range of characters, diversity in all kinds of ways. So I'm enjoying the writing. I'm enjoying the acting. I just don't really know right now if there's too much of the awkward humor for me to really, really like want to go the distance. I usually like a lot of British entertainment like right. a lot of british comedies and british comedy slash like for um us watching death in paradise mm -hmm. i'm reminded because right, there was the right. slash of comedy with something else and this right. is a slash of comedy and some action is that mm -hmm. what the mix is so we like that and we like the way the brits do the acting a lot of people high quality mm -hmm. and I've seen some of their work before and really appreciate them. It's just for me, I guess I feel like I'm not lost in terms of it's season three, but I do sort of feel like the tone of the comedy is varied, but that little awkward humor, like from uh, Modern Family, Tim, you used right, to love right. that show, but it was too much awkward humor for me. Yeah. Very relatable stuff, a little bit pushed in terms of the characters being realistic, that show. But this is not that. So I am on the fence as to whether or not it'll be just the style or the flavor of humor that I really love. But it's certainly not boring. They're really bringing together ensemble notes and not losing anybody, I think, in the character stew. What do you think? Yeah, no, I agree with you. I really like the writing um, and the acting. Uh, nobody's really, like, overdoing it. The great casting because you know everybody fits their character really well i saw the first episode of the first season and was wondering if you would like it and i was thinking like eh, it might be a little bit too too much of that uh yeah. awkward humor for you um uh, which you're noticing uh so it's i guess it's like sort of borderline for you i'm enjoying it yeah it's just because I think I'm not rooting for people to be in that situation. And yeah. these pieces are done, this especially is done so realistically. I yeah. really feel for the folks to be going through yeah. that. Yeah. For the night is through. 
and we've gotten through all but the last 20 minutes of it. So as opposed to me being sort of thrown off by the storyline around the Dean, that's pretty straightforward. It's really the relationship between Ronnie and Ben that I'm thinking we're missing some neat notes about. Because there's something about Ronnie doing the dirty work and then calling to say, hey, Ben, we have loose ends. And Ben is saying to this new woman that he's out on the date with, no, that's my ex. I don't have any loose ends. And of course, that makes the new lady feel like, hey, he's being honest and he's saying he's moved on. Let's, mm-hmm. let's accelerate things. But what I'm wondering is, y'all let us know, is Ronnie someone who is doing the dirty work because someone has to do it? Or is she someone who constantly pulls Ben back into trouble? Like, what has been the history of that relationship? Because I think... As opposed to me thinking, well, Ronnie's just giving Ben a heads up because the dean is out to get them and people are sort of suspecting that there was a setup that they Mm -hmm. did. Is she really just trouble for him? Like, is she not just handling business, but is she also just somebody who's always looking for trouble? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if she's just the one who's willing to do what everybody else can't do, but really helps everybody else. Right. Or if she's cutting corners and hasn't learned try to solve things a different way. Let us know. We were also talking before about other aspects, and I was trying to think of, what was it we were asking about? Oh, are there other episodes that have less awkward humor? (laughs) Because it's going way down as they're talking about the Dean storyline. And the, the detective, are we thinking that it was Haynes who set everything up for the Dean and planted evidence? That kind of thing doesn't have awkward humor in it so much. I am loving that that detective or DS uh, Haynes uh, is teaching a class that Diane is taking and Diane is like this annoying but model student in a way so she's in there learning from her and she's like oh we're like Hagney and Lacey and and (laughs) Sergeant Haynes is like not saying anything but Diane is so eager (laughs) to make the connections it's fun. There are lots Mm -hmm. of fun lines coming from these different characters being pushed in realistic ways that you can sort of anticipate as oh yeah that's right that's what might be happening she's gonna say something crazy okay she did diane but i'm loving it because it doesn't strain credulity i'm still saying that somebody could do that trying to curry favor with the instructor but i'm having a good time with it this little area here isn't too confusing i just know we're missing a few layers so some one who wants to comment out there and like and subscribe let us know what it is that's essential about the ronnie ben dynamic Mm -hmm. what have we been missing out on should we be rooting for ben to move on or are we just not letting all the little hints and layers come together to suggest to us that ronnie's really a great influence on him because she's willing to really like do what's got to be done to protect everybody curious about that what about a spiritual connection um i was thinking about uh courage um courage you need courage for a spiritual practice because there's a lot of stuff that you're doing that uh, is hard, um, is awkward, uh, is, yeah, so, um, and you don't know what the outcome's going to be. You have to have courage to go down the path. Um, and, you know, and, and, you know, I was thinking about uh, Myrna. Me too. I was going to guess this is probably about Myrna, right, who's right, the right, right. character who's been this activist who was worried to open back up to love, but she went for it. And so we're seeing her be with her dude who she's reconnected with. And it's feeling so good. She's crying happy tears, y'all. But that took courage to make herself vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, in other ways, the the other characters are having, you know, not spiritual courage, but courage uh, to do other other little things. Um, But, yeah, Myrna is the main uh, person who I was focusing on with that and you know it just made me think about uh, spiritual practice and how you know we have, have to have courage in lots of different ways in our life uh, different aspects and uh, spirituality is one of those if you want to really get somewhere with it you have to have courage. I wonder if we're missing some of that from Ronnie that's what I'm wondering here because mm. we see her as this agent of doom she has this knife at the beginning and then she's trying to get rid of this dead body this looks really bad but is she someone who is trying to be courageous and solve things and keep her little found family of this outlaws group safe? I mm. wonder. So, yeah, there are a lot of people moving things forward in good writing. People are trying to push against whatever has been their main thing that 
what's interesting about them, and then we want to see them push against it to grow as a story arc, as a character arc, I mean, in a story. And so courage is what should be taken. It shouldn't just be right. happenstance that has them go forward. It should be they can see that what has been their normal way to go has been holding them back from hitting what they want to hit, maybe love, maybe turning over a new leaf in life. Uh, so courage should be built into some of these journeys for these characters yeah, yeah. so things are not just happening to them and they're reluctantly doing things. So at some point they have to reach inside and make a decision, yeah, I'm going to break past what I've been doing because that makes us want to root for them. So maybe we've been missing some arcs that have gone past in seasons one and two and are paying off now. But I would love people to share that with us if you have some favorite arcs. Maybe the Greg character... Uh, Maybe some of the other characters that have been around a long time. Maybe even Diane. Maybe she's grown. She seems a little clueless, though. But maybe that's something that is still a remaining feature of hers. But maybe she's been courageous and grown in some kind of way. Let us know. Meanwhile, we're going to finish up. I'm eager to see how good writers are going to set up the rest of the mm -hmm. season. Yeah. Because we're not lost here. We can see everything is not going to get resolved right now. We're just bringing the gang back together and raising the stakes. Mm -hmm. So let's see how all of it comes together. Yeah. I'm very curious. Yeah. Let's go, baby. We are wrapped up now with the season three premiere of Outlaws. The series was funny, suspenseful, and took some time to answer some of my big questions as we had not watched it before. I'm gonna say that I was interested in learning a little bit more about how Ronnie and Ben were for each other. Was Ronnie actually just the bad girl? And everyone was talking about this. Is she a sociopath? Did she really kill this person whose dead body they're trying to hide and that they end up, spoiler alert, succeeding in stashing away for now and they've gotten rid of his car. And she gives a plausible self-defense kind of a scenario for why she brought a knife, but she did not actually stab this guy is what she said. So we have a lot of information that we were interested in about in terms of what's going to go on to queue up the rest of the season. So yeah, we're wondering, are these folks that are our heroes here, <laughs> our reforming heroes, are they going to be able to get away with trying to have set up this drug dealer, the Dean, and are they going to be able to get away with Ronnie being on site when one of the henchmen of the Dean who was sent to shake her and sort of make her not um, show up to testify against the Dean. Are they going to be able to get away with all of the getting rid of the body in the car and all this kind of stuff? I think it's really well done in that nothing is seeming crazy far-fetched that's not supposed to be played for laughs. Like the idea of Diane and then uh, sort of a DS Self-Worth, or whatever this guy's name is, who is the partner of Sergeant Haynes, uh, coming there and not seeing that the body was right, there, right, that's right. supposed to be played for laughs. Right, so right. I'm totally fine being drawn in by that, and I'm not disturbed at all, because I think it's just the actors, the, the characters themselves feel quite real to me. Yeah, yeah. So then we can get them in these little scenarios that are just supposed to heighten our sense of the drama. Yeah. And I was having fun with it. That didn't bother me. So yeah, I'm I'm loving self worth. Yeah. So D S self worth is on the scene trying to investigate his partner, Sergeant Haynes, but doing so discreetly. And Diane's been brought in, so that's gonna not go well because she's not discreet. But she is somebody who's a fan of Sergeant Haynes. So mm -hmm. that should be interesting to see if she sees things and doesn't process it as collusion in any way. But I don't know if Sergeant Haynes was actually involved at all. They're sort of thinking she might have been. And when Ronnie was being interviewed by Sergeant Haynes, she's like, just take the win, you know, don't ask how it came. So it's sort of like Sergeant Haynes is like, okay, I'll take that win. So it's right. almost like you think that she, Sergeant Haynes knows that these folks set up the Dean, but hey, the Dean is the actual drug dealer. So <laughs> if the drug dealer goes down, maybe Sergeant Haynes is not that bothered. Right. This is stuff where I don't take it super seriously because I haven't been going along with these characters. I think if I were spending a lot more time in this world, maybe I would find some of their murkiness on the morality a little bit more challenging to accept. But as mm -hmm. it is, I sort of say this is a blend of crime 
and comedy and these notes of somebody who's like this enforcer character being attacked by somebody else. He's in a dangerous business. If he gets off, I'm not that invested in him. So I'm not that worried about it. I think this is judicious in terms of blending this, like when we were watching Deadlock. They're really doing a good job of having a lot of realistic portrayals. And then you can blend humor like you might see in mm -hmm, real life mm -hmm. with gritty things like right. death, murder, grisly attacks, and things like that. Right. So This is more uh, more comedic. Definitely. But, but yeah, but, it's, but uh, yeah, it's a combination of the two, yeah. Yeah, and with Deadlock, I enjoyed having that lightness occasionally because yeah. there was a high body count there. Right. This is a bit different. I don't know if the body count is very high. It seems like they're raising the stakes in the series, and this is where they're bringing in something like a murder. Like before, there's probably threats of violence. They're dealing with these drug dealers and things like that. So I like the series. I'm sort of getting around to definitely seeing the acting high level. People understand the tone that they're striking with the realism and the humor, and they can turn and pivot to something serious, and they know what story they're telling. The writing, of course, is the thing that's providing that bed for them to play off of as actors, and it's striking that tone that's consistent across the whole episode. We are getting the questions that were raised addressed about, like, Ronnie and Ben and what's going to happen mm -hmm. going forward. They're leaving open that Ronnie and Ben might be dealing with each other more going forward because she has to have some place to hide out, and I guess uh, Ben is going to provide it. There's a lot of good stuff here. As far as the music... I think early on we had some suspenseful music going on that I commented on. I just think this has been something good. And you pointed out courage as your connection to anything related to spirituality. Mm -hmm. I just feel like we've hit all the notes. I, I think because there is some of this awkward humor, I don't know that I'm going to be saying that I'll be going back over and over and over again. Yeah. I probably won't be going back over and over again. I just feel like there's something here that might be a little overwhelming because we're joining in season three. Maybe that's it. Right, right. I don't know if it's because we thought maybe there'd be Christopher Walken in there, and I guess that maybe it was just season one. I don't know. Looks like season one and two. Okay, so we missed the Walken moment. And yeah. that's all we said, you know, if you mm -hmm. miss a Walken moment. I'm not sure what it is, but I do enjoy it. It's just what is going on here. The performances can't be faulted. The writing can't be faulted. Mm -hmm. It's probably just that we're coming in three seasons in. Right. And that's a lot of water has gone under the bridge. There's definitely a gelled ensemble. Everyone has their little place and their little note to play, and they're allowed to grow, and that's a sign of a really good story. Something here feels like maybe the heartstrings aren't being plucked for me as much because mm -hmm. I haven't invested the time with the right. characters. Because Myrna getting a chance to be open to love, that's right. something. Yeah. And then Greg's found this relationship, even though he's working everybody's nerve the way he's running his relationship, he's still found something. So we feel like probably that's a more recent development. So that's nice too. Seems like for me, I was inspired by the handling of the blended tone. And I enjoy what they're talking about, but I think we're probably, unless people comment, like, and subscribe and suggest to us some episodes of Outlaws that didn't have as much of the awkward humor. I'm probably not going to fall in love with the series to want to go back to it without that. But comment, like, and subscribe. Let us know. And also, we've been talking about other shows that blend things like Elsbeth, so y'all should check out our conversation about that. And uh, in the meantime, take care. Bye-bye. Let's go, baby. Woo!